Have you ever wondered about what the difference is between a physician's associate and a doctor? Well, in this video, we are going to look at the similarities and the differences between the two roles, how you apply to each of them and what the training pathway is like, and how you can decide which one of those is right for you. So let's start off by looking at the responsibilities of each role. A doctor must hold a degree in medicine. They often have a leadership role within the multidisciplinary team and are responsible for the care and the treatment of patients, as well as supporting other staff. Many doctors will choose to specialise in a particular field of medicine, meaning that they can then work in something that is more focused. Some of the jobs that a doctor might do include things like diagnosing patients, taking histories and exams, developing treatment plans for patients or referring patients to other more specialized teams, prescribing medications and performing more invasive or diagnostic procedures. These are only some of the responsibilities of a doctor because they are actually involved in so much more. So now let's take a look at physician's associates. Physician's associates are practitioners who can work autonomously or independently. However, they must be supervised by a fully trained and qualified doctor. Physician's associates can add new talent and skills and often offer a fresh and a new perspective. And they are particularly useful as an extra set of hands when things are very busy on a ward or at the GP practice, for example. This is key in order to help ease the workload and the pressures that the NHS is currently facing. This role has actually existed in the US for a long time, since the 1960s, and is actually relatively new here in the UK. It was introduced back in 2003 here. So as I say, it's quite a new role still. Some of the jobs or the roles of a physician's associate include taking histories, performing physical examinations, assisting in the delivery of treatment plans, managing patient lists, and providing health promoting and disease preventing advice to patients. So now let's have a look at the training pathways for both of these roles. To become a doctor, you can either do an undergraduate degree, which is typically five to six years long in the UK, or you can go through the graduate route. A graduate entry program is typically four years long, but you must have studied an undergraduate degree in another subject previously. So just at medical school, you are spending between four to six years. When you graduate, you then have to do two years of foundation training. Doctors in their foundation years are now called resident doctors, where they used to be called foundation doctors, but they are working as a doctor and they are being paid. After those two years of foundation training, doctors can choose to specialize in an area of their choice. Depending on the area that they choose, this can range between three to eight or even more years. So that's a long time studying in order to become a consultant or a specialist in a particular field. So if we look at the total length of time that doctors are studying, it can range from nine years to 16 years or even more. A physician's associate training pathway, however, is much shorter and is not as long or complex. There are two different pathways that you can choose to become a physician's associate. The most common route is to do physician's associate studies after you have done a relevant undergraduate degree in something science or healthcare related. Once you have achieved that degree, you then go on to do a two-year physician's associate diploma. This means that you are typically spending about five years if you go the graduate or the diploma route. The second option is to go straight into physician's associate studies, and this is a four-year PA undergrad course. So to become a physician's associate, you'll study in between four and five years. There will also be about 1,600 hours of training included in physician's associate studies across a variety of clinical settings, including 350 hours in general hospital medicine. You will also spend a minimum of 90 hours in other settings, including mental health, pediatrics and surgery. Okay, so now let's look at career progression and specialization. So as I mentioned before, after the two years of foundation training, a doctor can choose to specialize in an area of their choice. Specialty training can be offered in two different ways. So the first one is known as a run-through, 
This involves a single recruitment which covers the entire curriculum up until consultancy, for example, cardiothoracic surgery. The second type of training is known as uncoupled training. This involves core training and then a higher, more specialized training. And this is seen, for example, in acute internal medicine. It's important to note that different specialties will vary in how competitive they are. The more competitive specialties tend to be surgery, especially neurosurgery, and the least is general practice, although this is changing at the moment. So now looking at physicians' associates, once they have graduated or qualified, then they don't tend to specialise. They work generally in medicine, however, they can work in multiple different places, so in hospitals or in GP practices. And unlike medicine, their training is not as structured. So now let's talk money. What is the salary like for doctors versus for physician's associates? Well, the entry level salary is actually higher for a physician's associate. However, the salary progression is much better for a doctor. The more that they specialize, the more that they earn. This is summarized here in this table. For a doctor, the entry level salary is £32,398 a year. In their second year of foundation training, they earn £37,303,000. A specialist may earn £59,175. And on average, a doctor will earn £61,262 per year. Now, comparing that with a physician's associate, their entry-level salary is £35,392. In their second year, they're earning £43,742. A specialist may be earning £50,952, but on average, they earn £43,950. One thing to mention is that for both of these roles, there is the opportunity to work privately, which would most likely result in a higher income. So now let's touch on the work-life balance of these jobs. Doctors will very often have variable shift patterns depending on their role and what year they are in training, as well as their level of skill. During their foundation years, doctors are very likely to work unsociable hours and very long shifts, which means they might not have a great work-life balance. However, the more that they train and they specialize, these hours tend to become more dependable or predictable, which can lead to more regular time off. There are some exceptions to this. For example, if you work in general practice, the hours are typically Monday to Friday and are set. However, if you work in something like emergency medicine, then the shifts are most likely going to be more sporadic and the hours will definitely be more unsociable. Physicians' associates, on the other hand, are more likely to have a more regular and more sociable working pattern. They typically work on weekdays and will have weekends off. However, like doctors, there are some exceptions and they may have to work longer hours or an extra day. However, extended hours and shifts are much, much less common for a physician's associate. So all of these things are really important for you to think about. I would try and figure out what you personally value, what is important to you, and try and think about the life that you want to live. What does your life look like in five, ten years time working as either a doctor or a physician's associate? So that was everything for this video. I really hope it's been informative and has helped you to try and clarify which one of these roles is better for you. If you are set on applying to medicine, then I would recommend that you check out the FutureDoc website because we can help you with the entire application. This will help you to secure a place at your dream medical school. So apply to our one-on-one -on -one program in the link below. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.